Hey everybody, Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a great day. There is so much to go through today. I was just researching everything. So we've got, um, remember a couple of weeks ago, I was telling you about BitConnect. They can't find the guy. We'll get to that in a second. Coinbase has blocked over 25,000 Russian addresses. That's going to be deep. Um, is Israel authorities have also taken over or seized 30 different wallets associated with Hamas. That's kind of a big deal. There's a landscape um, injunction or injunctions in Singapore where they have, you know, basically locked up some cryptos that were stolen from a gentleman. Originally, he was vacationing in Mexico, but we'll get into that. We'll, we'll unpack that in a minute because that's not what it's really about. Netflix, American Express, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and KPMG all have said a bye bye <laughs> to Russia. Um, don't know for how long, but definitely until they get out of they get out of Ukraine. Um, so there's there's the reason why I bring that up is because you know there's more that goes into economic um, impacts than just tiny little things, and those things also translate over, or some of them also translate over to cryptocurrencies. So we'll unpack that as well. And then there is a bill that has been introduced in Louisiana where they are trying to introduce legislation that will lay the groundwork or foundation around cryptocurrency donations. Anyway, let's get to it. Don't forget, hit the likes, subscribe, and don't forget to ding that bell so you know when I'm going to drop a new video. I'm trying to do it every day for you guys. Anyway, so. BitConnect was allegedly a $2.4 billion Ponzi scheme. And Satish, what is his last name? Uh, Kambani was the CEO and founder of BitConnect. And he has disappeared. So the idea was that he was supposed to be in India when they issued, when they issued the case against him. But can't find him in India. They don't think he's in India. They don't know where he is. And for all intents and purposes, he could be right here in the United States. But anyway, the SEC has requested 90, an extension of 90 days and they got it. So they have more time to try to find this guy. So that's kind of interesting, right? Um, you would never think that, you know, something like that would, you know, at that level would happen, you know, with, you know, with a, uh, an exchange like that. I remember way back i was looking at bitconnect and i was like eh, i don't need that because i i had other exchanges already you know that already set up and it's interesting that i didn't choose that one and i can't remember why not and i think it really was it really just came down to i had too many already um little known fact coinbase has always been about the sanctions they're just doing it in their way so if the government says hey we have specific information that we want you to use, you know, when new accounts come across. Well, guess what? When they came up with those sanctions and they said, here are all the addresses that we want you to watch out for. Here are all the people, all the contacts, all that good stuff. Coinbase said, cool. So whenever they get something new come in, a new, you know, a new request for an account comes in, they compare that. They also actively look at the accounts that they have. Well, they found over 25,000 that were associated with supposedly illicit actions um and they said okay yeah no we're done with that and they gave that list of over 25 addresses over to the u.s government so we'll see what happens with that but coinbase is pretty active in chasing down what's going on in that space um and, and another thing israel has seized over 30 wallets associated with hamas specifically with the al machudan i could be mispronouncing that um, uh, exchange, which is owned by the Shamlock family. And they have several exchanges, many exchanges by which they gain money and they use that money to support Hamas. So these are all just examples of how crypto can be tracked. Don't forget there was that $3.4 billion that was tracked just recently and you know, recovered. So I don't know if they recovered everything, but they tracked it down. It's on a public ledger. It's out there. We might not know who you are, but we can see the crypto moving. Everybody can see the crypto moving. 
So if you see the crypto moving, you wait until it stops moving and land someplace where you've got some information. Once you find that information, all done. Gets locked up almost immediately. So don't think you're hiding things unless you are trading with, you know, cold wallets or something like that. You know, I've got X, X amount of money on this cold wallet and I trade the cold wallet for something else. But even then, you can still see the crypto because it went to an address. So it really depends on, you know, what kind of crypto you have, how you're moving that crypto, all that other good stuff. You know, um, you could have gotten legal crypto, but gotten it through ill-gotten gains, whatever it is. But it can be tracked. Just because you think you're anonymous doesn't mean you actually are anonymous. You know, Silk Road is no longer here, right? Just saying. Um, in a landmark case, there was a guy who was basically, you know, on vacation in, in Mexico, really rich person, and, you know, was telling somebody how to open up his safe, blah, blah, blah. And they took his crypto because inside were the keys for his crypto and they took his crypto and they shared it amongst each other. Well, they caught several of those people because I guess some of them got a little bit of hush hush money and one person got most of it. Well, they found it in Singapore and said, oh, that's what you're doing. And they dropped the ban hammer on it. Sorry for the reference. It's actually a product that we have for Rebel Reach where um, if somebody tries to attack your website, we can see the IP address and we just drop the hammer on them and send them off to a blank page. Um, keeps us PCI compliant, all that good stuff. So similar kind of thing. They dropped the ban hammer and said, nope, you're all done. And they snatched it all. They created an injunction and that was it. So now we're just trying to see like what's the next step that they take to, you know, go after that crypto, go after the people that stole it, all that other stuff. Because one would think that they pretty much know who did it, how they did it. So there's a lot more to play out in that situation. Now we have Netflix, American Express, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and KPMG. The last two are two major global accounting firms. And we all know who Netflix is, world's largest, you know, entertainment streaming company, and American Express. We definitely know who they are. Those four companies have joined a long list of companies that have said, nope, we're done doing business in Russia. And you still have companies like, you know, Yum Brands and McDonald's. Done with you, McDonald's. Done with you, Yum Brands, because you're still doing business in, in Russia. Not doing business, obviously, in Ukraine, but you're still doing business in Russia. What's, the, what, what's that about? Um, I'm not in agreement with that, so... Bye-bye to both of those companies for me. Glad I'm not holding any stock because I definitely would have dumped it. Um, my little brother's not holding that stock, holding any one of those stocks either because um, they bite. Starbucks, I think, might be doing business, but they're taking that money and they're giving it to everybody else. And here, you see, this is Stitch. I told you before that Stitch might actually stop by every now and then because he wants to play. <sighs> so with all of that, Here's my last bit of information that really made me stop and think. The United States is not necessarily moving in unison with regard to crypto. You have the Biden administration taking a little bit of a heavy hand, in my opinion, with regard to crypto and not necessarily doing what I think they could be doing to make crypto a positive thing for the country and another revenue stream for the country. But you have um, state level lawmakers that are trying to do things that will make it. That will make crypto, you know, a little bit better. Uh, there needs to be regulation. There needs to be fair regulation across the spaces. And Louisiana is introducing a bill or has introduced a bill where any kind of political donations that are made with cryptocurrency must be immediately flipped into fiat because they're considering it as kind or, yeah, as kind. So what that means is that... Yeah, if you gave me this crypto, it, it's equivalent to cash. Flip it to fiat, that's the cash. And you have to flip it. You don't have to flip it immediately, I think. You have to flip it before you use it. So there you go. So I think there, you know, that's a that's a conscious way of creating a framework around how, you know, what's the value of crypto when it's donated to a campaign. They will also, whoever receives it, is also on the hook for making sure that everything is legally accounted for. So they will have to keep a ledger for it, all that good stuff. So they, they've actually given a lot of thought into, you know, I don't know if it's perfect, but they've given a lot of thought, you know, for this bill. And I think it, it, it's a good start. So let's take a look at the numbers because today 
has sucked all day. Not not part of day, all day. It, it's just sucked. Um, we're moving at the bottom of the bottom of the barrel over here, bottom of a range, and I hate that. But you want to know what's really cool? Yesterday we were at 22, today we're at 23. So it proves we're still within a range. That's cute. If you look at Bitcoin, it's at 38,217 or 38,217. We're a long way off from where we once were um, last week. But we're still kind of within a certain range. And I think it'll go up. I, I really do think that it's we're in buying season right now. Everything, you know, got better and it came down. So look at this. You went from as high as 45,000 all the way down, dropping 7,000 to 38. There was actually a point when it was all the way down to, I think, almost 37, you know, in the 37s. So when you really stop and you look at this, it's an opportunity for you to figure out, oh, can I get in? Like I said, until, until you actually hit, until these, these coins actually hit, you know, their, their highs again, you're nowhere near you're there. You're nowhere near there. You're, you're like a third off. You know what I mean? So looking at BTC, 38,215. ETH is in 25. In the 2500 level, it was earlier. Is that in the 2400s? So that's a big deal. All these things are on sale. They're all on sale. It's a matter of when do you get in? How do you get in? How much do you get in with? Remember, dollar cost averaging, taking a, taking a, you know, a large number and breaking it up into smaller tranches and then on a regular schedule, buying in when you want to buy in. It's sort of like, you know, how you used to do mutual funds when you were a kid. You you drop $50 every paycheck, $50 every paycheck, no matter what, no matter if it went up, went down, on average, you kind of just smooth sailing went up with everything. And I think right now you have too many things that are on sale that can do well. Um, like I said, uh, I'm not looking at Polkadot, but I'm looking at Terra Luna. I'm looking at Solana. I'm looking at Avalanche. Ave is another one I'm looking at. Algo is another one I'm looking at. A um, lot of people talking nonsense, you know, spewing FUD. There's one guy, I forgot his name, won't even bother to look it up for you. Um, supposedly some big wig, some big, you know, podcaster or video guy um, was talking nonsense about, about uh, Cardano. Even after... The huge growth in use in Cardano, the upgrades that are coming, the upgrades that have already happened, how solidly everything has moved, and he's still spreading FUD. Don't want to listen to this guy because that tells me that he's doing it for a reason, not doing it based on what's you know what's reality. So I think Car I think definitely ADA is good. Um, Doge, I, you know, I'm looking. Oh, it's at 11 cents. And I'm just saying to myself, wow, that's not a good place. The Doge is, Doge is still a meme coin. Whereas SHIB, like I said, that's out of, out of two, that's my preference. I'm looking at SHIB. SHIB is at number 15. Doge is at number 13. But I think SHIB is going to sooner or later flip Doge. And once it flips Doge, that's it. Goodbye, Doge. Doge won't be a thing. The only friend for Doge will be Elon. And nobody's going to care. Um, Matic is at a buck 42 Ugh, steel, um, again, Kronos, which is crypto.com steel near networks at 980 steel. So I'm looking at each one of these things and they're saying, okay, these are, these are better numbers than I was seeing a few days ago where things were a little bit higher. Didn't want to buy then because again, if I'm trading within a range, I don't want to buy at the high end of the range. I want to buy at the lower end of the range. And right now we're at the lower end of the range. So what you've gotten today, as you will get every day, is news that I think that will affect how you purchase in the future and how you handle yourself in the future in the crypto cryptocurrency space, as well as news that can affect you right now. So obviously we have the macro event, which is Russia invading Ukraine, an unnecessary war, and that's going to be the major effect on everything. Now, I think the I think the the volatility is really stemming from, you know, people being unsure about how Putin is moving forward because he keeps yapping about nuclear weapons and blah blah blah, you know, and saber rattling. If you do anything with, you know, with the airspace, you know, we'll consider you as a part of the war, blah blah blah. Okay, cool, got it. If we can get him to a point where he shuts the hell up and stops talking like that, I think everybody will kind of ease into the events that are going on right now. We just, it, it just needs to be settled because 
you know, the way it's looking is he wouldn't stop at Ukraine. He would keep going. He would find someplace else to get started. And every time he gives himself time to do something, he's doing something on the back end to make himself, to make Russia a little bit stronger. Unfortunately for him, the sanctions are actually starting to hit home. And you can only lock down your country but so much and hide them from the rest of the world's news. You can keep feeding them, you know, BS. But the fact is, is that sooner or later, they're going to wake up and go, whoa, this is what's going on outside? Yes, that's what's going on outside. There's a war. Your guy started it. It's unnecessary. And the reason why you can't use your credit cards or you have to, you know, work with China to use your credit cards. And even then, there could be an issue there. Um it's because your guy started a war necessarily and he's yapping about, you know, shooting off nuclear weapons and anything that doesn't directly agree with what he says is considered fake news and you will get thrown in jail for 15 years. How's that for iron fisted? Awesome. Way to treat your people, dude. So anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Do me a favor. Don't forget, hit the like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I'm going to drop a new one. Pretty soon we'll have some, we'll have the site up. We'll also have podcasts going. So in case you don't want to listen, I mean, in case you don't want to watch everything, you can listen. So that'll be coming very, very soon. And yes, we will do it from all the way back from my first video. Hope you have a great evening. Bye-bye.